Alrighty you guys, welcome back to another little video where today we are going to be taking a look at the Jingsha X79 Dual Socket Motherboard. Let's get into it. Okay, so let me first and foremost by saying thank you very much for coming by, thank you very much for watching, please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff helps me out so much, and today we are going to be taking a look at a very interesting little motherboard CPU and RAM combo. Well, kind of a RAM combo. This was a Jingsha X79 dual socket motherboard with two E52643s and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, this is kind of what I threw together when I saw an opportunity to pick up one of these motherboards. I got this motherboard for about $125-ish dollars, shipped to the United States from China, and at that point, or at that price point, it's really not bad. Now the CPUs that I decided to go with were the E5-2643. Now the E5-2643s, you can buy two of them for about 25 US dollars. And I already had one, so I think I got both of mine for about 22 US dollars. And then for the RAM, I simply grabbed what desktop memory I had available to me, and that was my uh, Corsair XMS3 Platinum. That is 1600 megahertz uh, RAM out of the box and it ran very well. Now, I couldn't get it to clock up to 1866 like what I was hoping for, but it did run at 1600. Now, let me first go over... Oh, and before I forget to mention, graphics card. Graphics card was my 980 Ti uh, WinForce Extreme with the overclocked BIOS, so it was running at 1400 megahertz out of the box. Okay, so let me first and foremost by going over some things about this motherboard. It is dual channel RAM. I needed to get that out there first because I know there's going to be questions about that. It is a dual channel RAM. It's a dual channel per CPU. So it does, yes, have quad channel memory, but it is only dual channel per CPU. And for, well, everything else on the motherboard, it's got USB 2, USB 3, dual gigabit Ethernet, it's got the PS2 ports, NVMe slot, it's got two PCIX 16 slots, it's got two 4X and one 1X. It is what you would probably come to expect from a Chinese motherboard, or a Chinese X79 motherboard at this point in time. And let me tell you, it is not a bad board for that $120 price point. You can get quad channel memory boards for about an extra $30 on top of that $120, so for about $150-ish. But is it actually worth it? I don't know, I will be testing it in the future here. Okay, so our first benchmark, we're going to be taking a look at Cinebench R15. And for Cinebench R15, it scored a whopping 1,125. Now that is the highest I have ever had a CPU hit in Cinebench R15. Now that was the multi-core score. Uh, I did not test the single core score, so let us just move on. The next game that I tested, or I guess I should say the first game that I tested, was Rainbow Six Siege. In Rainbow Six Siege, we got an average FPS at 1080p high settings of 184. Then I dropped it down to 1080p low settings, and we got an average FPS of 184. So, what does that tell you? It tells you that there's a CPU bottleneck. But it wasn't in the fact that there was two CPUs, it was simply based upon the fact that the CPU is just not all that fast. And it's not going to be kicking out extremely high FPS numbers, yes. The 980 Ti could take a little bit, could take better, faster CPUs, but still at 184 FPS at 1080p high, not bad. And when you jump it up to Ultra, your frames drop or your frame rate drops down to about 174. So with that being said, let's move on. Next game that I tested was Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn locked in at 75 FPS, or my uh, refresh rate is 75 FPS. Same way that I always play that game, ultra settings maxed out to the moon, had a few drops here and there, but that's to be expected with Grim Dawn. Moving on. The only game that actually gave me trouble here. CSGO. Now, I wasn't able to capture it on video, but there was these really odd, just random, like, one second drops and freezes. I don't know why that happened, but it just happened. And that was the only game that actually gave me problems. Okay, next game that I tested was Dota 2. Dota 2, yet again, 110 average FPS. Now, Dota 2 is very single core intensive. And that's kind of the problem. It simply didn't utilize our second CPU the way that it should have. That was the same story with Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3, yet again, only touched 
one of the CPUs. Next game that I tested was Valorant. Valorant, yet again, only used one of our CPU cores, so it was one core, two threads, and it was almost fully utilizing both one core and two threads, with an average FPS of 128. Yet again, that was a little bit lower than what I would have liked, being the fact that Valorant is an easier to run game, and you can tell that it doesn't really leverage more cores and threads. Which I, I do feel like is kind of a little bit of a letdown. Not extremely, but enough to where it does kind of sadden me, but I digress. Moving on to our last game that I tested, which was Call of Duty Warzone. Now, if you would have told me that Call of Duty Warzone would utilize two CPUs, I would have told you that you're probably lying. I would not have believed you unless I saw it myself. Yes, Call of Duty Warzone fully utilized both our CPUs, giving us a very smooth and comfortable 110 FPS average. Which really did kind of surprise me, being the fact that Call of Duty Warzone is a somewhat intensive game. And when there are so many people on the map, or right when you drop out, right in the beginning, it gave us really good and honestly quite competitive scores. But the final thing that I guess I would like to talk about is the, well, just overall daily usability of this system. Now, when I first was introduced to this whole idea of a dual socket system, people would tell me that it would simply just crash or they wouldn't be able to get into Windows or things would be wonky and Windows wouldn't like it and it would just be kind of a pain in the butt to use, aka what uh, Craft Computing had kind of described way back when in his 2018 video when he had first looked at the Huanin uh, X79 dual motherboard. So moving forward to now just about 2021, dual socket motherboards, do they work? Well, actually surprisingly well. In fact, I very well might actually switch to using this particular motherboard with this particular CPU as my main daily driver for a little while. It's kind of surprising to me how well it actually worked, and video editing and content creation on that was actually pretty darn good. Now, I didn't actually try and do anything like streaming or actually rendering out a video. I might actually try and render out this video just to see how it'll run on that system. But this is definitely going to be something that I would like to uh, explore more in the future. It really is compelling, and especially for its price tag of only about $120. Now, yes, there are other options in this dual socket motherboard configuration system, or there are other Chinese dual socket motherboards, and I might check out some more of them. I might honestly pick up one of the quad channel memory boards simply based upon the fact that that could actually be a lot of fun to use. I don't know, I haven't ever tried it, and who knows, it might, like I said, it might very much be worth the money. So, I digress. This has been Cross, this has been another little video, and thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, let me know how it's going, and I will see you all later. Peace!